the music is fabulous, and I'm hoping that could follow me around maybe for the rest of the day, anytime I make an entrance. Um, first and foremost, Betsy and I are so excited to, to be here this morning, and we're particularly excited to be able to bring a little estrogen to the stage um, for this. <laughs> a little estrogen power. Uh, as Bill mentioned, what we'd like to talk about now is that intersection of technology and media. Um, change is going to continue to happen at a very rapid pace for all of us in the industry. And basically, for just about all of us in this room, we're really digital immigrants versus digital natives, which means we have to continue to work hard to understand how we can leverage all this technology. Um, devices and systems are going to continue to be important and are going to continue to be very interconnected. Um, platforms are going to be an important part of everything that we do. And in fact, you can argue that operating, operating systems are really the new battleground. Um, and it becomes very interesting, Betsy, in your role. You sit in a very unique place working at Microsoft, which is the developer of many of these platforms and devices, as well as needing to market them to your consumers. So let's, let's talk a bit about that. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me here. It's uh, my first uh, conference joining you. And it's a great time to be here to talk about where we are as a company. We feel as though we are right uh, in the heart of this technolo technology change uh, in some pretty unique ways. We are a platform creator for advertisers to reach consumers. We are a provider of devices and services to consumers and to businesses, to advertisers. Uh, and then I sit in a unique spot in that, in that uh, con corporate setting and that uh, I'm a client of Microsoft as well. Uh, I use our, our platforms, I use our products in leading our global media practice. We do advertising in 42 markets around the world across a pretty broad portfolio of products from our commercial products such as Windows Server to uh, our consumer flagships such as Xbox. And I have to think about how I use our platforms and technologies in the most effective ways to reach the consumers that I'm trying to reach as well. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a bit about this notion of the ecosystem. You know, as I mentioned, operating systems really are becoming the battleground. More and more consumers are thinking about which operating system is going to deliver for me, which one links across devices. Um, so why don't you talk a bit how you guys are thinking about the role of the ecosystem in how you are marketing the products? Sure. Uh, I think ecosystems be, have really come to the forefront. Uh, while it, it has been true that they've existed for many, many years uh, and are part of our foundation as a company, they've come to the forefront most recently. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking earlier about CES where uh, you could see the ecosystems come to the fore. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we think about Microsoft and what we've done in terms of our, our platforms of how we provide products for businesses, for consumers, or advertisers, Things that we tend to think about are that ultimately consumers want to buy a device, no matter what size, to fit in a pocket, to be on a wall in a living room, but they can't live without services. Services that work well together, services that fuel their passions for entertainment or music, services that enable them to, com to communicate seamlessly, easily around the world, services that help all of us just get the job done. So as we think about the ecosystem, we really think about two different elements. We think of how do you unlock that potential from a technology perspective that starts with developers, it starts with uh, what we build, it's, it's frankly part of our heritage. We, as if not more importantly, think about the ultimately all of our experiences from a consumer perspective and, and our expectations in this uh, pretty mobile social world. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it really um, shows us that the consumer's expectations are you know, mobile is first, um, that social is at the heart of everything, and that they are expecting personalized, more and more they're expecting personalized um, messaging delivered to them. And that things need to be liquid and linked across their, their platforms um, that they're, and their devices that they're buying. Is that, is that how you're seeing it too? Absolutely. Uh, consumers don't have the patience for a general general experience or an experience that's frankly out of context. Mm -hmm. That's what we often think about. Uh, we do so much of our, our storytelling for, for our products in our ecosystem on a brand basis though. Mm -hmm. One thing that is quite important I think for, for, for us as, as marketers to think about is that even in a world of technology integration and ecosystem, ultimately consumers still do choose brands. Mm -hmm. And they choose brands based on a variety of contexts. And so when we are marketing ours, we do focus on in, what is right for 
for the individual products at the time, what's the conversation we want to have with the customers at, at a given point in time. We think about tapping into live events that are part of the, the core uh, of what's going on in the world. Uh, just a couple of examples that maybe I'd talk about that we've done recently. Sure. Uh, over the course of uh, the last year, as we wanted to really focus on the brand conversations that we'd be having uh, with, our, with our service Bing, we looked at what are the ways that we could be integrated into the fabric of conversations with the VMAs. And we realized that people do want very personal, personalized experience. They want to talk to their friends about music. They want to talk about videos. They want to share. And what we thought of is, why not tap into that potential, that conversation that will be happening, and create a new award category that would really enable people to share what they wanted to talk about with their friends. And over the course of what ultimately ended up being a week, we were able to extend an event, participate in what was going to be a conversation anyway, right. and really turn it on its head by creating this new award category and unlocking the potential with the Shareworthy Award. We had over 50 million shares. Mm -hmm. We really had taken an opportunity to uh, integrate search into what became a true marketing program. Mm -hmm. You know, and it really does highlight um, the part, there's so much of our industry that stays the same over the years i.e. what builds brands and that notion of storytelling. But the benefit of what technology brings to us today are new ways to tell those stories and new ways to make them more relevant. Um, how are you seeing that as you tell stories across all the different launches that you've had of late? And we've had a lot of launches. You've had a lot it's, of it's, launches. Uh, you may have seen a few of our ads on TV. <laughs> if you haven't, I'm awfully sorry. Uh, we may have missed uh, the one show uh, that, uh, that, that, that's your favorite, so let me know, because uh, I do feel as though uh, we've been pretty active out in the marketplace this year. Uh, active out in the marketplace, telling stories, as you note, on a brand basis. Mm -hmm. And really, um, when, for us, when we thought about uh, the entire portfolio across Microsoft, thinking that Windows 8 is a massively ambitious release, but it is not just an operating system. It includes browser, it includes new devices such as service, Surface, it includes uh, productivity. What we realized is that we need to tell our stories in a context that is true to where consumers are today. Fundamentally social, fundamentally mobile, but yet very personalized. We wanted to be able to tell stories that were true to the products that we're introducing to market, whether it be Windows Phone, which is truly a very personalized phone experience, or Xbox, which brings truly the most, the most amazing entertainment. It's, people are using Xbox much more for entertainment than for gaming these days. And that's not something that uh, we might think about as advertisers, but it's certainly something that is personal to consumers who are using Xbox as their primary viewing methodology right now. Yeah. When we think about storytelling in that context, we want to reach out to consumers on that brand basis and really dig a little deeper to what's their passion point, whether it be sports, whether it be live entertainment, whether it be music, whether it be the ability to communicate and, and get, that, um, get the engagement with their families and friends. Now, the reality is that the consumers do have a certain perception of Microsoft. Really? Um, I know, hard to believe, but there's a little bit of a perception of Microsoft from past experiences. Um, and obviously, you know, there's a huge array of platforms and devices that you have. And as you talk about what Xbox has been, has become, and I'm sure only more for the future, when you think about the surface, um, how is this new way of telling stories helping to change your perception to consumers? Mm -hmm. it's, I think it is a way of changing perception that starts with what we've built. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we may have a, a variety of perceptions, uh, and one of the things that uh, we don't, we may not have talked about as much as, as the, the kernel of foundation that, that does fuel us is uh, the notion of integration mm -hmm. and integrated experiences, which uh, you, can, you can see as we talk about the ways in which uh, consumers will use our different types of devices. As we really thought about the new wave of products and services we'd be bringing to market, whether that be with Surface, our new device, or the operating system, or the, the new services, we thought of a, a few different things. One is the notion that consumers are going to be buying devices, and they're going to be using services mm -hmm. day in, day out. Uh, Surface is an interesting one because uh, it's brand new and in, in, into the marketplace in a land that, uh, as many of you know, it, the technology is changing very fast from 
screen size of all different sizes from the tiniest of phones to phablets and tablets and wall screens. And in the case of Surf Surface, we have a couple of different versions. One that we would market and we talk about is very simple. It is a tablet. Another version that is a PC. It's very flexible for different types of users. We really try to focus on what is the core value for each of the products, deliver against that, and then likewise uh, market to that and talk to consumers in that context. One of the things um, that we've done to incorporate uh, the product truths in our storytelling is to make sure that we are bringing that engagement with the consumers into, into the whole process. We also make sure that we stay to our marketing truths. That's mm -hmm. my role, is to make sure that what the, product, the engineers have built and what we ultimately go out into the marketplace and talk about creatively or through our media uh, really does break through and capture the, really the, the tentpole act activities that are happening in the world today. Uh, when we think of Surface in particular, uh, the conversation that we wanted to do was tap into uh, an event that we know is very popular, the Grammys. Mm -hmm. We created a, a marketing execution to tell some stories that so often people get fixated on, uh, that's a, it's a one day, it's a one night uh, marketing opportunity that marketers will want to tap into. Many of you work with, with clients in that context. For us, what we really thought about is how can we get the conversation going earlier? Mm -hmm. How can we surface new talent with a little bit of, a, uh, of fun? Uh, but really engage, incorporate our advertising that was across every channel mm -hmm. to begin a conversation, to get people excited about what would be an event, to inspire people to want to contribute uh, their votes for people who would be a band that would get an, an opportunity to perform mm -hmm. in our ads. And we really mapped out a, a, a long story, if you will, to bring people into the conversation, to then get them excited about voting and, and participating once bands were whittled down to a short list. And then ultimately, the conversation that we had through the course of the evening was with the particular band that, that ultimately won the award. So to net out, as we think about storytelling, of course it has to be very appropriate for what products we are talking about to our consumers or in our commercial case. And it needs to be very relevant in the consumer context. And we've really tried to integrate ourselves cross-channel and into the lifeblood of what consumers are doing day in, day out. Which really is a significant fundamental shift, you know, particularly for Microsoft, given normally engineer-driven companies, it's what's the next product, what are the product attributes, do the product you know, bonanza, tell them everything that's better. Very different to be st doing the storytelling piece. <laughs> you bet. I mean, the, the, the joke used to be, do you launch and leave? And you know, that's not something that, that you, uh, you want to wave a flag about. But from a marketing perspective, we would build up to a big hype. And we're really at the beginning of our journey with this new wave, and in a world of services and devices where tech is changing so fast, we really do look at marketing as it's 365. It's something that we need to do. It's something that we need to be engaged in in a very different way. Absolutely. And, you know, we just obviously heard a bit about big data and data. So, you know, I've been always a big advocate that says more than ever our industry is an art and science uh, place right now. You know, consumers, we're all still humans and we still make decisions rationally and emotionally. Um, and so we need that piece of it. But we obviously do have the luxury of data in the world today. So, you know, you've been talking a bit about how you're building experiences. How are you bringing the data piece of the equation in to then understand the efficacy of these efforts? Yeah. Well, as a, as a tech company, we're, we're uh, data we're, heavy, data heavy <laughs> uh, very grounded in research. Um, actually seeing uh, that uh, the little quote there about whether Steve thought that there was any research done uh, or intuition, it's interesting. We think about that often. Um, you know, we do use data at the heart of, of, of what we do for both building the products and marketing, but it's got to be used at the core to really support an idea, mm -hmm. an idea about a conversation we want to have with consumers that's frankly interesting or fun or relevant. Um, and we've done, so we've done some programs of late that really do use data at the core, but then deliver an interesting, uh, an interesting program that's part of an overall marketing uh, effort. And we've done a couple that I, I'd share with you. One that we did with, with Bing was to be able to use the data that we can find out and people sh based on how people are sharing with each other so that uh, we being partnered with Spotify so we could come up with a program for people to come up with new music playlists based on what their friends are listening to. That's using data, 
but in a very fun, cool, relevant yeah. way because music is something that is very much a center of conversations and people always want to know, oh, have I missed this or are, am I on the cutting edge of knowing who, uh, a new artist coming out? So that's a, that was an interesting opportunity where we can take the power of search, we can take the power of data, social search, integrate it together to then give value to the consumers. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's got to be about giving value. Uh, so that's one probably on, on, our, on our consumer uh, and, you know, what's a conversation without talking about IT? Uh, because while we do uh, so much of our advertising and marketing for our consumer brands these days, um, I have a, a soft spot for our, our commercial businesses, uh, Windows Server and Office and, and Dynamics, that uh, we sell those products to in a B2B fashion. And frankly, data and interesting creative marketing is as relevant to IT and business decision makers as it is to consumers. So in this case, we did a partner to make sure that we cre implemented an ad unit that incorporated trending content. Mm -hmm. Because when IT professionals are super busy, and they, yet they want to learn about what's going on in, in their particular domain and, and Windows Server or trying to find out what, what they should do in terms of buying new technology or implementing it, they trust and rely on communities as well, their Absolutely. friends, their colleagues. And so we look at so what- So they're human too? Yeah, can you believe I IT people, they're human IT too. IT people are human and IT people want to make sure that they are ba making decisions based on peers, friends, trusted colleagues. And so that opportunity to find out, hey, what's the IT leader at that other respected company reading mm -hmm. was a way for us to use data in an interesting way to bring that power back to that audience. Absolutely. You know, and I think there's still many people that feel that big data and data is the death of creativity or, you know, even on a simple level will fight creativity. Um, and I think that some of these examples and how you're talking show that's farthest from the truth, that it really Absolutely. can be an, able, an enabler of choosing creative solutions. Absolutely. And, it, you know, it's interesting hearing the, the conversations this morning, just in the, the two sessions before us, uh, data as an opportunity uh, for business models yep. and, and yep. monetization uh, uh, in the overall agency ecosystem, data as an opportunity to, uh, for really kind of mining consumer behaviors. It's all interesting, but it's got to land in a really compelling creative idea that will capture the mind and hearts of the, the consumers there that are just, we're all so distracted. We've got to be able to break through in a really meaningful way. And that's what we hold ourselves to that challenge of don't just do the program because we have access to the data and can do it. Do it because consumers won't be able to run away from it. They'll actually be running towards, towards it. Towards it and embracing it. Mm -hmm. You know, and along those lines, one of the things that the, the data that we have has opened up is very much this notion of agile marketing. You know, the days of putting the plan and set it and forget it are long gone. And more importantly, there's just a real opportunity to use data to be much more nimble and agile in how we market. Mm -hmm. You guys clearly operate in very competitive categories. That's not going to change anytime soon. So you're always looking for every advantage. How are you beginning to employ more and more agile marketing techniques as you, as you serve the product? Yeah, it's a great question and one that actually... Uh, I talked to a, a number of your colleagues about even as we were planning for Windows 8, mm -hmm. uh, we, we had some really big goals in terms of uh, a release that was important to us and yet very ambitious and one that we felt that uh, would be uh, really a win in the consumer marketplace. And we had conversations of, we know what we want to do, but what happens if? How do we know what the market will be? Because you're doing this planning so far in advance. And so we knew we wanted to have a very innovative program, a very impactful program. But at the same time, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, what I call marketing in context. Mm -hmm. There's what we say and what we don't say. And then there's what our competitors say and what they don't say. And what consumers say and don't say. And we needed to get past what was our big idea for our marketing campaign and really be thoughtful about how we'd be prepared to be able to respond to different, different scenarios in the market and also not walk in parallel to the consumers but really walk with them and be a part of that conversation because in advance of a product launch, mm -hmm. you really don't know what the conversation will be and you need to make sure that you've got that reserve to be agile, to be nimble, to say, we're going to design programs that are timely. We're not going to simply implement programs we designed six months ago. And that's a, that's a real shift in a mindset. It's yes. a shift in a mindset for us 
It's a shift in a mindset for all the agencies that we work with from, uh, particularly in that creative media dynamic, because typically we are, you'd follow a tried and true, in our case, we follow a tried and true path of uh, the, the ad planning process. And what we realized is that a core part of how we'll be successful is to make sure we're not only integrating across all the channels, but harnessing the fact that consumers are mobile and social and that social conversation will continue every day has to be the core of what we do and change how, how we do our marketing. And I think that's been one of the biggest shifts that the media agencies have been going through is coming off of a planning and buying of static things and being numbers and right and wrong and black and white to moving to an agile, fast-paced world, scenario planning, comfortable in the gray yeah. in terms of that path forward and then partnering with folks such as yourselves in leading the way. Mm -hmm. Um, so just wrapping up here, as you look ahead in this continually changing world and of media and technology converging, what's on your mind for the next six, nine months? Yeah, I look ahead and, and, fr and from our perspective, uh, it's, it's the beginning. It's the beginning of a, a new wave of opportunities based on uh, where we are with our brand portfolio, the products we've introduced. I think for for marketers uh, and for agencies in this time where technology is changing and that the, the ecosystem uh, playing field is evolving so rapidly that uh, it's a tremendous opportunity and as you're working with uh, clients or as we th marketers think about how to engage deeply with the, with the customers, I think of uh, ease of conversation across multiple entry points. Mm -hmm. Being really smart and thoughtful of what is the point of entry and how do you continue that conversation day in and over time and in the right context as opposed to just design and go. Yep. So I think it's a tremendous opportunity not only for, uh, for what I do in my, in my day job as well as what we can do as an industry. Uh, and I'd say that the, the best days are actually yet to come when we see what technology has just unlocked for us in a way of having uh, really impactful conversations with consumers. They'll be new and different, but they're, they're still to come. I couldn't agree more. I think there's no more exciting time to be doing what we're doing. <laughs> Um, and it's certainly going to be a wild ride, um, and we're on for it. So thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Um, and, you bet. Uh, thank you, everybody. Work.